Buenas tardes. This is the first of two videos in which we explore an application of shift registers, building a 4-bit serial adder. This first video will focus on concepts through a slideshow. The next video will be a longer demonstration of the adder in action. When it comes to tracing values through a register, it always takes a long time. Earlier in the course, we designed a 4-bit parallel adder, also called a cascading or ripple adder. This was a combinational circuit. There were no registers or flip-flops involved, just a series of four full adder devices linked together. Because of this, there was no clock. The outputs would be computed immediately, well, after the propagation delay. Now our focus will be on this 4-bit serial adder. We'll zoom into the details soon, but the big thing to note on this schematic is that there is a single full adder device. Two shift registers, holding the add end and aug end, feed into this full adder one bit at a time, and those bits are passed in synchronously with the clock. Why do we call this a serial adder? Because one bit from each source is passed in at a time. Contrast that with the parallel adder, in which all of the input data is passed in at once. Each approach has its advantages. A serial adder would take more time to compute the sum. As we'll see soon, this design requires 12 clock cycles. Contrast that with the parallel adder, which computes almost immediately. But that almost becomes significant as we scale up the number of bits. This cascading design of C out to C in causes propagation delays to increase linearly with each bit added. So, for example, a 16-bit adder would have a hefty propagation delay, which could force the design to run the system clock at a lower frequency. Also, the hardware, i.e. the number of gates and wires, becomes cumbersome as we scale up the parallel adder. The serial adder is less affected by these scaling issues. If we want a 16-bit adder here, the design is exactly the same, just with 16-bit registers instead of 4 bits. Each additional bit does require more clock cycles, but the system clock frequency would never be impacted. The propagation delays through the setup won't change, each column of addition requires the same amount of time. Speaking of hardware, inspect this schematic closely. How many flip-flops does it contain? Pause the video as you contemplate. The answer is 9. There are 4 flip-flops in this top 4-bit register. There are 4 in the bottom register. And then there is 1D flip-flop down here. What information are those flip-flops holding? Register A will initially hold the aug end value, and then at the end hold the completed sum. Register B will hold the add end value, and this D flip-flop will hold the carry out value after each column of addition. But wait a second, how do the aug end and add end values enter the registers in the first place? We see four input switches on the left, but three of those are for control. Only this serial in switch is for data input. In other words, all eight bits, four for the aug end, four for the add end, must pass through this wire individually, one per clock cycle. Now let's discuss how to use this machine. This will be a quick overview. Next video, we will see it in action in the simulator. First, we clear the registers by flipping the switch. As long as we leave this on-off switch low, the clock signal will not get through the AND gate, and the registers will hold their values, which is useful for memory. But once we are ready to add, we flip the switch high. Over the next four clock cycles, adjust the serial in signal to pass in the four aug end bits. Yes, that's right. The register A values first pass into register B. There's no other way to enter data. Then, over the next four clock cycles, enter in the four add-end bits, one at a time. 
As these new bits are loaded into register B, the old bits are shifted through to register A. At this point, the aug end and add end are in place. Then run the clock for four more cycles. First, this sums the least significant bits of A and B. In other words, the rightmost column of addition is completed. Second, the next column over is summed. Third, the next column over is summed. And fourth, the leftmost column holding the most significant bits are summed. While all this is happening, the sum bits are shifted back around into register A. This means that at the end of the process, these four bits will hold the final sum. And at this point, we can flip the on-off switch low. It really is hard to believe that this small circuit accomplishes all that. Let's start to convince ourselves by analyzing a numerical example with a table. Here is a completed table showing the step-by-step -step addition of 0111 plus 0100. The phase numbers listed in the left side match with the sequence discussed on the previous slide. The 9-bit values are listed here across registers A and B and the single D flip-flop. The first phase is to asynchronously clear the registers. This causes all of the nine stored bits to equal zero. The second phase is to load in the aug end to register B. This is just basic shift register operation, so I don't list out all four steps here. But the key is that the aug end, or A value, is currently stored in register B. Now we get to the interesting part, and each step is listed. This column indicates what the full adder is computing. The inputs come from the rightmost bits held in registers A and B, and the D flip-flop. Recall that the D flip-flop holds the carryout from one column of addition, which serves as the CN to the next column. The full adder outputs go to two separate places. The sum bit shifts in as the leftmost bit in register A. The carry out becomes the next D flip-flop value. So, during this one clock cycle, the full adder computes 0 plus 1 plus 0 equals 0, 1, and the registers update accordingly. The same thing happens during the next clock cycle. This 0 comes from the D flip-flop. This 1 comes from the rightmost bit in B. This 0 comes from the rightmost bit in A. The full adder computes the sum bit as 1, which feeds into A as the other bits shift down. It also computes the carryout bit as 0, which becomes the next flip-flop value. The same pattern happens over the next two clock cycles. Notice the color coding in the table. These purple numbers show how the aug end, or A value, is first passed in to register B, and then shifted one bit at a time into register A. While that is happening, these red numbers show how the add end, or B value, is shifted into register B, again one bit each clock cycle. During this period, the original black zeros are slowly lost from the circuit. They are being overwritten by our new desired values. At this point, the aug end and add end are properly loaded, and we can begin the actual addition. Keep in mind, nothing has changed in the circuit, therefore nothing changes in our table process. First step of phase four shows the full adder adding zero from the D flip-flop, plus zero from register B, plus one from register A. The sum bit shifts into the leftmost bit of A, as A's other bits shift over. The carryout bit becomes the next D flip-flop value. Lather, rinse, repeat. Follow these same steps for the next three clock cycles, and the sum is complete. We better check our work. This table tells us that 0111 plus 0100 equals 0. 1011. Notice how I read that leading zero from the final carryout value. In decimal, 
This would be 7 plus 4 equals 11. Good news! A couple of final notes before we wrap up. First, look at these x's shifting into register B. Those would be actual logic values, either zeros or ones, coming from the serial in switch. But the x's indicate that we don't care what the values are. They do not factor into the final sum because we stop at this row. Also note that, for this example, there is only one time where the carryout is high. On this row, the full adder tells us that 1 plus 1 is 2. The carryout is stored in the D flip-flop. Then, for the next column, that 1 serves as the carry-in. It is neat to see this pattern reflect what we know about longhand addition. Even with this small example, I hope you can start to see the value of serial operations. They are akin to loops in programming. In situations where we identify an operation that is repeated over and over again, we don't need to build a circuit that does it all at once. We can use one small device to do the operation and shift registers to feed in the data at the opportune time. I understand this example probably feels overwhelming at first. The best way to understand it is to replicate this table by hand, working row by row and comparing your results to mine. Try doing that now. After that, watch the next video, which uses different numbers and shows the table and the simulated circuit together.